gonna come to pass And it won't take long For it's a man of So I will remain Confident in this I will see it And I believe it Let me go directly to the word. I want you to grab your Bibles, and I know you've had incredible preaching uh, this week, but I want to challenge you a little more through the word of God. I want you to meet me in Joel, the second chapter, verses 28 through 32. Joel, the second chapter. Thank God for these incredible minstrels and those that have the heart of David that play skillfully unto the Lord. Joel, the second chapter, verses 28 through 32. If you're there, would you shout back? And those of you that are online, if you have not shared this service, I don't know what you're waiting on. I want to commission you tonight to be a share warrior. I want to commission you to tag somebody and let them know that God has a word for them. If you're there in Joel, the second chapter, 28 through 32, would you shout back? really strong I'm ready for the word and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon somebody shout all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall that's a promise now that's a guarantee shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance and the Lord hath said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call I want to read verse 28 again and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I want to preach to you tonight prophetically from this word Position for the poor. Positioned for the poor. I want you to make sure that you, and I'm not going to have you talking to your neighbor all night, but I want you to make sure that you're sitting by the right person and say, hey neighbor, I want you, as a matter of fact, say God wants you to get positioned for the poor. Come on, holler across the room and say, hey neighbor, don't miss it tonight. God wants you to get positioned for the poor. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Positioned for the poor. As I was studying and consecrating and preparing for this time, the Lord began to give me a sobering demeanor. And if I don't scream, just hear me tonight, all right? 
I, I want to give you a sobering word. The thing that makes me so excited to come to this church is that primarily my audience or this audience is filled with a lot of millennials and uh, the younger generation. And this does not exclude anyone that's in the season or the prime uh, age of your life, uh, 45 and older. And I'm not excluding you tonight. This will include you. But primarily, I want to speak a very sobering word at the top of this year to sons and daughters to sons and daughters. My assignment, it is to prophetically share and show where we are on God's timetable and to help this generation to discover even, somebody shouted back, the more of God. And you gotta open up your minds now because if you feel like you already have him figured out, you won't be able to receive this word. If you sit in religiosity and feel like you know exactly what to do, you won't be able to see. Time has shown us. The pandemic has shown us that we have not been as prepared for position the way we thought we were. Our faith has been tried and our faith has been examined and some of our faith it has proven that we said we believe God more than we actually believed him positioning oh I thank you God I feel goosebumps and I'm trying to pace myself positioning and the right position matters the right position matters and the Lord said to me even during this pandemic prophetically that I have allowed the pandemic and took my church through a shaking so that I could shift them. Let me say it another way. The Lord sent my brother in the back back there with that. I don't know if it's a, a, a gray shirt, but I'm, I want to just say this again to you. I saw you lean in. He said, tell my church that I shook them to shift them. Because truth of the matter is we have had a lot of people on the pulpit but in the wrong position. And when I say position, I'm not talking about positioning with titles. Because anybody can send off for a paper license. Anybody can go through a class and receive an ordination paper. I'm not talking about your credentials. I'm talking about people across the body of Christ whose heart has not been positioned properly. Can I talk to you tonight? And the Lord said that he wants us, he wants specifically this generation to position yourself for this end time prophetic move. You've got to. I want you to hear the urgency now. You've got to position yourself like never before for this end time move. Somebody shout yes Lord. In every entity of our world we have seen. We have seen power on display. And I want to tell you this, that power in the hands of a wrong person or power, let me say it like this, can be good or evil depending on whose hands it's in. A politician with power can either hurt you or help you. A preacher with power can either manipulate you as a person or with power they can change your life. And as I stand here tonight, this first week of 2022, I stand here yet, oh God, I stand here yet concerned that in the body of Christ there are many who either 
don't understand the reason for God's power or they have misappropriated his power. And the wrong position of your heart will make you believe that you are somebody that you're not. Somebody shout power. I, I want to just lean in right here because our lives revolve around the use of phones. Some of you, that's where your Bible is tonight and that's where you take your notes. That's where you text. That's where you, oh God, don't, don't let me get in trouble off the, off the front. That, that's, that's where you uh, look at social media and videos and all of that stuff. And I know it may date me. You may say that I'm old fogey for saying what I'm saying. And I'm just going to say to you, do not get rid of, uh, of your technology. But your cell phone, depending on your flesh, is not always sanctified. <laughs> oh, I love this church now. I said your cell phone, depending on your flesh, is not always sanctified. What are you saying? That means when your flesh wants to look at the wrong video, Come on, this is consecration. It's, th this, is, this is a cutting of the flesh. When your flesh wants to look at some half-naked girl or some half-naked skin-tight man, come on. When your flesh wants to send inappropriate DM pictures and DM messages, come on, come on, let's just talk now. I, I didn't come for the religious. I came for those who say, I want to keep it real tonight, woman of God. When your flesh decides to listen to Kanye West, you are using your cell phone mm -hmm, to get into those places. So your cell phone, depending on your flesh, <laughs> is not sanctified thank you drama for having me on that head not right there but your Bible can't go to the DM messages oh father help me now tonight <laughs> your Bible cannot change the word based upon what you think it should say and I'm telling you that the Bible the word says listen by the truth and change it not. You cannot change this based upon the day of the week. You can't change this based upon what you feel like you should say. Let me, let me calm down because we're living in a generation that you want to make the word say what you want it to say. Yeah. You want to interpret it to say what you want to say and you want to continue to use the word to go against your haters oh y'all gotta come on and come on now because i'm going somewhere you you want to use the word but the same word that you try to turn against your enemy it is the same word that says that you have to forgive people that spitefully, intentionally use you. Come on. It's the same word that says if you have an ought against your brother, leave your gift, your gifted self, your anointing, your calling, your title, leave it at the altar. Don't preach over it. Don't shout over it. Come on. Don't sing over it. Leave it at the altar and go and be reconciled to your brother you can't change this and you have to be careful of the different interpretations of scripture oh God because they have tried to make the word user friendly and and I love the ESV version I go and look at the message Bible and different translations but you have to be careful of even reading the word because you do know they have a, a Queen James version of the Bible 
Ha! You do know glory to God that they do have interpretations of the Bible. You do know that in those apps they have taken out homosexuality and perversion. Come on, let's have church tonight. And so you've got to make sure, hallelujah, that you take this word as David said and you hide it not in, not on your Facebook glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, you can post it on Facebook, but he says, I'm going to hide it in my heart. Hey, why? Why do you have to get it in your heart? I'm, I'm talking better than y'all are talking back. Why do you have to get it in your heart? Because if I get it in my heart, I won't sin against him. Our cell phones are not sanctified. Can I, can I put a nickel in the meter right here? I saw something the other day, and I want to help you. I want to help you tonight. I saw something the other day on, on one of my flights that really disrupted my spirit. And I, I, want you to, I want you to hear me. I saw that a few years ago, maybe, Kanye West wrote uh, his own version of the Bible. Now, let me just pause right here. Let me, let me take my time. Because some of you have downloaded his music. And he had a fighting chance of repentance and restoration until he blasphemed. Oh, y'all ain't talking now on this side. Until he blasphemed against the spirit of God. When he began to type in the beginning, Kanye created heaven and earth. Come on, come on 21st century. Come on y'all, look at me now. Talk to me now. If, I, if you hear the truth, talk back to me. He, he began to say in the beginning, Kanye created the heavens and the earth. You don't believe me? Google it. You don't believe me? It sold out of Amazon. And when I saw that, I said we might as well stop praying for him. Because there is no repentance or salvation. Oh God, y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I'm going to give it to you anyway. When you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you have bought a one-way ticket to hell. Oh, without the chance of a return flight. And so when you put his music on your reels on Facebook and Instagram, when you put his music, y'all ain't talking to me now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to need security. You got me, my, huh? When you put his music attached to your post, you are silently and secretly and maybe ignorantly endorsing somebody that has blasphemed against the God you serve. But I came tonight to snatch a generation out of the grips of the devil. I came by the power of the Holy Ghost to tell you that God loves the truth and any man that puts himself on the same level of God, you have already been damned. Y'all don't want to hear this. You've got to hear me tonight because our children the children that you will birth, the children that's a part of this generation, they will not know the truth except we give it to them. And here is the thing about the truth. You may not know nothing about this, but the truth, oh, thank you, Father. It is like castor oil. I told you you wasn't going to know nothing about it. Now I need the old school to start talking to me now. The, the, the truth, hallelujah, it is like castor oil. Ah, uh, it don't taste good. <laughs> come on, come on, but it will clean you out. <laughs> oh, I need somebody to lean in now. The truth of God's word. <laughs> they told me when I was when I was pregnant with my son and I was going into uh 
uh, the hospital and I kept having false labor. Uh, my my mother-in-law, old school, she said, Barbara, I know you're not going to like this, but if you're ready, oh, thank you. If you're ready to deliver, go take you about two tablespoons. <laughs> Take you about, I'm enjoying my own preaching. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Take you about two tablespoons. Hold your nose because it's going to be nasty. But it will clean you out and slot that baby into the birthing chamber. I did what she said and sure enough, I started, hallelujah, there was a cleansing before the birthing. And God said, tell my church, you trying to birth this and you trying to birth that and you trying to birth this business and you want to birth this ministry and you trying to birth relationships he says but if you birth it without the cleansing it's going to come out contaminated and it shall not live that's why we see prophets one day but you don't hear about them in three weeks because they have birthed out gifts that are contaminated but somebody shall Pastor, do we still believe in absolute truth? Do uh, we still believe, glory, help me, Holy Ghost, that the truth is not subjective? That means the truth of God's word doesn't change based upon the subject matter. Uh, I got to press right here. The truth of God's word doesn't change based upon your family members. The truth of God's word, it is absolute. He said, you shall know the truth. Come on. Not big mama's truth. Come on. Not just your pastor's truth. You shall know. I'm getting ready to get out of here. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Somebody shout, I need the truth. And I want you, I want you, I want you to consider. I want you to consider getting you a paper Bible. Because the moment that I bought this, nobody could change it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. I know you're new school and I know, I know you're fancy. But the moment that I bought this, no one could edit what I have in my hand. And, 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 and while I'm here, oh God help me tonight. I want to tell you that you've got to graduate. You've got to graduate uh, from five minute devotionals. I hope I can keep coming back after this. You got to graduate. Here it is. From giving God a quickie in the morning. I thought most of y'all would talk back to me. You got to graduate. Hallelujah. You got to graduate, my brother, from giving him five to seven minutes in the morning. And you say you don't have time. But you have time on Facebook. You have time. Some of you are scrolling social media in the service. You can't tell me that you don't have time for the demons that are coming upon your generation. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the attack of the enemy that wants to sabotage and drag your generation to hell. You've got to get in the word of God and use it as your shield and your buckler. Come on in 2022. Come on, get to 10 minutes at least in the morning. Come on, make your way to 30 minutes. How can you pray for an hour? You take 10 things and pray for them six minutes each. Or you take six things, come on. Because I know we tell you to pray, but sometimes we don't teach you. The disciples did not ask Jesus, teach me how, how did you make that blind man see? 
didn't teach me teach me how you took those two fish and five loaves of bread and how you fed five thousand people plus women and children they didn't ask him to teach them how to perform miracles they said master teach us the secret sauce to your power teach us how to pray teach us and that's why we can't get rid of the mothers oh come on now young people I know you got it going on but that's why we need the seasoned saints come on that's why that's why God has given me a voice in this generation because my grandmother and my great grandmother that had a white barn in the back of her head that wore thick white shoes and thick white stockings and she wasn't on the nurse's kill but they taught us how to pray and they taught us how to pray out of our fleshly desires over into the Holy Ghost you want to know why God haven't given you what you've been asking for it's because you're asking out of your flesh maybe they talking better on Facebook you asking from your flesh you're asking to prove your haters wrong God give me this house so I can prove my haters wrong give me this car so I can prove my family wrong that I did become somebody and so you're asking hallelujah you're asking from the wrong place but when you learn how to pray you put your desires on the altar I'm getting excited here you put your desires on the altar and you begin to say Lord search the corridors of my mind search my soul and see if there be any wicked way try the reins of my mind and see if there be any wicked way in me I don't want in 2022 since y'all looking at me funny let me go ahead and go for the jugular vein I don't want nothing this year that God has not assigned to my life I don't care how fine he is I don't care how much money he has I've been doing good for the last 15 years single saved and satisfied I don't want nothing God doesn't have for me so every time I pray I pray the Lord's prayer let your will be done come on saints let your will be done come on in earth as it is in heaven come on elevate your mind elevate your desires to heavenly places come on put your hand on your mind and say elevate my mind I gotta elevate my mind I want to challenge you and I know I came to challenge you I want to challenge you to get you a paper Bible go buy it and read it and study it you're reading but you're not studying oh come on how can you preach Ooh, hallelujah how can you sing Zion songs if you are not studying somebody shout the word the word the word the word the word in chapter one of our text please give me a few moments the prophet Joel hallelujah somebody shout glory to God he, he is speaking to the southern kingdom of Judah if you read this text I want to give you some history and I'm going to get out of your hair. He, he is speaking again to the southern kingdom of Judah without making reference to the northern kingdom of Israel. It's hard to know his exact timing because Joel does not mention, my brother, any other prophets. He doesn't mention any other kings. 
However many scholars, can I just teach Sunday school for just a moment? They, they date the book of Joel to 835 B.C. And this makes him a pre exilic prophet. It is a prophet, in other words, that served the Jews before they went into Babylonian captivity. Joel was not announcing a coming judgment of the Lord. He was describing in this text, for those who love the Bible, he was describing their present state. They have been devastated by successful swarms of locusts. You, you remember when God says to them, and I will restore, come on, what the locust and the canker worm, they, they, they have been consumed by them. And he is making it known that Judah will experience a time of famine. And financial ruins because of these locusts. That this plague was so unusual, people of God, that Joel says in chapter 1, verse 3, I feel the Holy Ghost. He says, tell your children about it. The times were so remarkably difficult that parents would tell their children I lived through the plague of the locusts. Oh, one day should the Lord delay his coming. We will tell our children that we live and you will call it whatever you want to call it. But we've got to call it what scripture shows to us. That we live through the plague of COVID. Come on. Oh, that was a shout moment right there. We live through the plague of Omicron. We live, I said we live through it. Oh, come on. You better know when to shout. We live through the plague of the Delta variants and all of the other variants that are still coming. We live through it. Somebody shout, I live through it. They testified, oh my God. They testified, they, they, they put a mark in the minds of their children that we live through this plague and part of the reason why they told them hallelujah was so that they would not repeat the same thing that got them in the plague in the first place what are we telling this generation what are you hearing that you can name it and claim it and grab it and have it is that the only thing that you're hearing across the pulpits? Stuff that will make you shout without surrendering? But I need to talk to the older generation now and tell us that we are doing a disservice to this generation if we only tell them about the success of God. But we don't warn them that he is still the same yesterday, today and forever and if you get in trouble with God he'll send something your direction come on he will send a plague to dry stuff up and only he can change it chapter 1 and 5 Joel can I keep can I keep preaching Joel tells the drunkards to wake up. He says, wake up and see the devastation the locust has caused. Church, are you still asleep? With all the devastation. And, and here is the thing. <laughs> if you're not careful, here is the thing about God because God will change it so good, Imani. He'll change it so fast. He will be so gracious to us. 
that if we're not careful glory to God we will boast about the goodness of God and not uh, not learn the lessons uh, hallelujah come on you'll get comfortable with him always fixing it and always turning it but there are some seasons uh, that just like a parent with a hard headed child there are some seasons that God is saying I'm going to put you in time out uh, a little while longer because when I let you out in five minutes you went back and started acting like the same joker like you didn't learn nothing and I'm concerned that the church uh, you got the same praise uh, you waiting on somebody to stir you up before you praise him uh, glory you waiting on the click track yes you are uh, I watched you when you came in uh, it's like some of you are still sitting at a circus uh, waiting to be entertained uh, and you mean to tell me uh, that God has allowed us to see uh, a plague that is still roaming the land uh, and you need bells whistles and cameras uh, the devil is a liar uh, it was when we were shut out of the church uh, that you should have been in a shut in with God uh, come on Zion uh, it was when we were closed out uh, and the pastors didn't know what to do uh, that you should have deepened your own personal uh, relationship with him uh, thank God for the pastor uh, thank God for the leaders uh, but they can't follow you home uh, come on y'all ain't talking now uh, they can't get you out of everything uh, we are not superheroes uh, and don't let nobody make you a superman uh, we are human uh, with an anointing that graces us uh, to do what we've been called to do uh, but you should be in your own house he tells them I feel the Holy Ghost he tells them people of God he says I want you to wake up oh ye drunkards oh God can I say this the Lord said the church is drunk yeah I said and I'm not taking it back before I take it back I'll add more to it he said the church is in time glory to God and, and I know some of y'all you looking at me like you're real saved and sanctimonious but, but and, and I'll just tell my testimony my vice was gin and juice and I know you may not believe it my vice was rum and coke come on I, I know it was cheap but that old Boone's poem y'all ain't talking now playing quarters y'all don't know nothing about that I, I know what it's like I know what it's like to go in a place sober and sit at the bar and come out and find myself drunk y'all ain't talking to me the church has been inebriated come on you are tired ah, the church y'all y'all stop talking maybe I'm talking too loud but the church is drunk drunk on things that have caused us not to be sober minded drunk on ministries that have caused us not to be sober minded somebody has put a mickey in the church's drink for you to believe more in new age mysticism than you believe in the word of God somebody has put a mickey in the church's drink for you to believe it's okay to slip and slide out of crazy grace and never get up and apologize somebody has put a mickey in the church's drink for you to still believe that your future is bound up in your horoscope the church is drunk hey yeah you can't think right when you're drunk they tell you don't drive and drunk and some of you have made car wrecks of your life you made wrecks of your life i'm not done yet you made wrecks with your decision because you are drunk you're drunk with emotions you're drunk by relationship goals you're drunk by somebody boosting you up but it's not your time you're drunk because you see the platform and you want the lights we're 
drunk with pride. I'm coming down the road. We are drunk on our own hype. We are drunk. And the Lord said, tell the church, sober up. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober. Uh, and vigilant because your adversary come on, come on don't stop talking I'm almost done, I'm almost there the adversary your devil roars roams about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour touch somebody on your road look at somebody, high five them air five them and say hey neighbor this is not the hour to be drunk, come on holler put your prophetic finger in somebody's direction and say hey sober up how 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 are you going to see me through when you're not sober how how are you going to pray me through when you're not sober sober up how are we going to win souls to the kingdom of God and we're not sober he tells them Joel tells them he says look at your condition hear me and mourn he said look where are the wailing women where are the weeping men that would pick up come on and that's why I don't believe that some of y'all really have a prayer life because you can't tell me that you really have a prayer life and there were not times that you don't ask God for nothing I, I, I'm not coming to ask you I came to weep oh y'all and y'all what's wrong over on here come on I need some more help I came to weep for the conditions of the land come on what makes you what makes you a child of God is when he can put something on you and you carry that in the spirit you lay out in your floor and by the time you get up there's a puddle of tears in your carpet some of you are laughing at stuff that you should be weeping about some of you are making mockery at stuff in the body of Christ that you should be weeping Joel tells them look at your condition and mourn he tells them mourn with the emotion of a young passionate widow you mourn as a young woman who just lost her husband I'm not making this up this is what Joel tells them he says don't just look at this plague stoically he says as a matter of fact I don't want you to minimize the suffering at all he was not like your dentist that says this may hurt a little he was telling you he was telling them and I'm telling you that where they were and where we are that we are going to suffer oh, oh look now look now look now and, and that's why that's why I love the church of God in Christ you can't join in you gotta be born in that, that's why I love those seasoned saints because they said to me baby it's a suffering way y'all ain't heard that I, I, I know you don't know nothing about that that's why you leave church at the first sign of trouble because you don't understand that the moment you gave Jesus your heart and the preacher your hand come on you signed up you enlisted for some trouble come on come on come on they used to say it's a suffering way so go ahead and condition yourself to be lied on go ahead and condition yourself to be overlooked go ahead and condition yourself to suffer but they would say if I suffer with him y'all don't know when to shout if I suffer with him I'll reign with him I came to tell you that your suffering will pay off I came to tell you don't you stop don't you don't you discredit your warfare because 
because your warfare huh, it's producing a victory huh, that you would not have had huh, except you gone through the hell huh, that you've gone through huh. don't discredit huh, your haters huh. don't discredit huh, people that do you dirty huh, because you would have never known huh, peace that passeth huh, all understanding huh, except you went through the storm huh, somebody shall glory He is telling them, I'm going to get out of here. He is telling them, he said, allow this plague. Are you in here tonight? I said, are you in here tonight? I'm not lost. I'm still talking to position for the poor. He said, allow this plague to turn your heart back to God. And as we look now, on 2020 and 2021 and where we are currently the disparity of our times we are dealing with the same things and I came tonight as the prophet Joel to walk us out and through the impending dangers and she on the bus and judgments of God I came to walk us out and through the impending judgments of God. I came with a charge tonight. Hallelujah. To warn sons and daughters. Ah, oh, you got to hear this prophet tonight. To warn sons and daughters. That as it was in the days of Joel. So it is in the body of Christ. I, I want you to understand tonight if I'm not boring you just hang with me tonight because I don't come with a 10 minute I'm not a 10 minute that's why I don't do well when they do those 12 last sayings of Christ because I'm not a 12 minute preacher come on I've got something to pour into you tonight and I hope you have the capacity to receive it I, I want you to understand that the Acts 2 experience in the upper room it was a fulfillment of the prophecy in Joel 2. But in order for the prophecy to be fulfilled, somebody shout this back, conditions had to be met. Come on, shout it one more time. Condition had to be met. I, I, I want to pause here and tell you, because here it is, I or any other prophet can prophesy to you until you pass out. Oh God, are you going to let me say that? Be careful of who's prophesying to you in this hour. Because some that once had the gift are now operating in sorcery. And some of them ain't even that deep. They have just picked up something. Here it is. Listen. Listen to me. Be careful of falling out of word on words that make you feel emotional. But there is no truth to it. Because some, hear me now. I'm giving you insight. Some are prophesying from a spirit of of familiarity. I, 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 gotta, I gotta give you this because I don't want you to be hoodwinked and bamboozled in 2022. I don't want you to keep going to all these conferences and services because they know how to tell you how to spell your last name. You know how to do that and I say it across the body of Christ. I believe in the word of knowledge. But some prophets can look at you and because you look depressed y'all ain't talking they prophesy come on now from a spirit of familiarity come on they are familiar with your spirit y'all ain't talking to me now it is a spirit of manipulation and control I came to kill this thing now I, I, I came to kill this I need some intercessors on the watch because the devil don't like this they 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 have the spirit of manipulation 
you look lonely you look broke down so they begin to say to you woman of God I see in the spirit that you're dealing with loneliness and depression and, and rejection who has not dealt with rejection that's a familiar oh y'all ain't talking now that's a familiar word and can I tell you that when God speaks to you you don't always have to fall out ain't scared of nobody in here I'm not scared of nobody watching when God speaks to you sometimes you need to stand up and hear the word of God stop all of that falling out and stand and hear in sobriety of mind what the spirit of God is saying to you you don't have to be slain in the spirit when people lay hands on you every time and for somebody to think that you're not receiving oh he wouldn't let me I tried to post it on Facebook I posted it the other day and he said take that down because too much of your flesh got in that word but now this is not flesh this is spirit I want to tell you for somebody to think that you have to fall out to receive that is a God of pride come on who are you to think who are me y'all ain't talking who are me to think that I have to be so wonderful to cause you to fall out y'all ain't talking now you gotta watch who's prophesying over your life who's speaking I don't want everybody speaking into my life cause some of the stuff that you speak you can't even live through yourself you have no credibility in the spirit the Holy Ghost does not bear witness to what you are saying I don't want that's why I keep my circle small and I'm diminishing it every day why because I've got to guard my heart I've got to guard my ear gates come on church with all of those spiritual tapeworms that you have get off of everybody's Facebook everybody does not have your word I said that to say that I can prophesy to you all day hear me now and it's not that it's not true from a true prophet don't be mad at prophets when the word the true word of God doesn't come to pass because we can speak it and declare it but it's up to you to live it oh y'all looking now funny because some of you want us to prophesy to you levels and nations when you don't know how to be faithful in the neighborhood y'all ain't talking I know I'm losing all of my amens but I hear the Holy Ghost saying go ahead girl and preach it some of you want to be sent to the nations but you won't even come and sweep the floor of your church some of you want stages and platforms but you won't sing on Sunday morning come on you've got to live this thing True prophets didn't miss it. But unless your will is submitted to God. I know I've said that a few times. You've got to be able to submit so that it can manifest. In order for prophecy, I'm not lost, to be fulfilled. Are y'all still with me? How much, how much time do I have? I know it's Friday night and on Friday night we used to let it all hang out. Hallelujah, glory to God. Some of y'all are on timers. You got 60 minutes only in your spirit. But, but I want to give you all that God has for you at the top of the year. In order for God to move, Joel is telling them, Joel is telling them conditions have to be met. What, what is the conditions even according to Acts the second chapter? According to Joel, the second chapter, remember, Acts 2 is a fulfillment of Joel 2. They have the same conditions. What is the first condition? And some of you is going to sound like I'm cussing, but I'm telling you I'm speaking English. The first condition 
is repentance. And y'all, y'all, y'all. There were not a lot of amens right there. But thank you, Holy Ghost, because I know I have the right word. And verses 12 through 17, if you go back in your study time and look at Joel, he says, now there are turn to me with all of your heart with fasting and weeping there's that word and with mourning he, he, he is saying that God is calling his people to repent I'm not going to preach on idols because I feel like it's a staple of every message but God was calling his people from idolatry and the Lord has been dealing with me pastor man of God he's been dealing with me about the problem of a divided heart a divided heart somebody shout that back a divided heart come on can, 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 we, can, we, can we keep going y'all still here a, a, a divided heart so many of us have divided hearts because you have a heart for God it is indicated because you're here. But, but the problem is with the divided heart that you also have a heart for the world. The, the, the Lord spoke through Jeremiah the prophet and declared, you shall seek me and find me in the day that you seek me Come on, Bible study students. With all of your heart. In the law, the people were commanded to serve the Lord with all their heart and their soul. And what we're seeing now is that although we made a place for God in our heart, it is not the first place. <laughs> oh, I feel Jesus. He is not the first priority. We're telling God, I'll get to you when I get to you. But there is a clarion call. I feel the Holy Ghost. To turn to God. Come on, sons and daughters. There's a poor that he has to put in you. There is an anointing. You, you've got to hear me in the spirit. The generals are dying. Come on, not just in the kingdom, but today, Sidney Portier, all of these generals are dying. And if you are not positioned in your heart, who's going to receive the mantle? Who's going to receive the mantle of Elijah? Come on. Who's going to receive the mantle of Catherine Kuhlman? Y'all ain't talking. Who's going to receive the mantle of Evangelist Joyce Rogers? Who's going to receive the mantle of Bishop Iona Locke? I know a lot of people want it, but if your heart is not submitted, Oh, God help me. There's a clarion call, sons and daughters, to repent. And not say to God, if you're, if you're still listening, I'm sort of sorry for what I've done. No, no, we've got to mean this thing. Joel tells them, he says, rend your hearts and not your garments. And in those days, they had an interesting culture that they would show their grief and their remorse by ripping their clothes. They, they would hear of death and of a loved one and they would wail and tear their clothes. But God said to them, and he sent me to say to you, I don't want an outward show. Ah, a lot of weeping and wailing and outward demonstration but there is no change in your heart I, I heard the Lord said tell my church stop putting on a show on Sunday morning I, I came to talk to sons and daughters because you are the Joshua generation yeah you are the generation that's going to lead us into the coming of the Lord 
Jesus. But playtime is over. True repentance says, I want my DMs to be saved. Woohoo, hello, lights. True repentance, thank you. You got my back, my sister. True repentance say, I want my music to be saved. Uh, true repentance, God help me now. True repentance say, I want my I want my cell phone to be saved. Come on. Some of you can't get a man because you got too many naked men in your phone. Y'all ain't talking. Some of you will never get a man because you keep sending all of these naked pictures. Y'all not talking on this side. Come on, sons and daughters. Uh, let me talk to you as a spiritual mama right here. Uh, come on, pull up to this table. You've got to sanctify your cell phone I'm not lost I talked about it at the beginning but he just gave me something else come on saints you gotta you gotta sanctify yourself oh God can I say this he said tell them tell them some of them are just one DM away from being exposed You better hear me now. You, you're one message. You're one text away. Oh, y'all don't want this, but this is all I got. Hallelujah. You won't get a chance to have it like Burger King tonight. You won't have it your way. The Lord is trying to set you up for a prosperous 2022. Ah, come on. You are one message away from being on Larry Reed you are one message away y'all ain't talking now from being on the blogger and you are not except he said tell them don't keep rending and ripping your clothes rend your hearts and not your garments there is a difference I feel the Holy Ghost somebody throw your head back and shout speak Lord there is a difference between true and false repentance. False repentance, pastor, is what I see from my five-year-old grandson. After telling him not to do something, it's only when he gets caught. <laughs> that he saw, oh, I'm sorry, Nana. And he turns into the sweetest kid, Imani. He, he turns into just like, I mean, like just the son. I'm sorry. I, I won't do it again. And, and the Lord said that's what we're seeing in the body of Christ. Because people are only sorry because they have been caught. They are only disturbed when their secret sins have found them out. But true repentance, help me Holy Ghost, means I'm sorry. Not for my business being in the street, but God, I'm sorry for disappointing you. I'm sorry and I want to be delivered. Come on. I'm sorry and I want to be set free. Come on now. I'm sorry and I want to turn. If my people who are called by their names would humble themselves. Come on Zion. Don't quote it and not live it and pray. Seek my face and turn. He ain't talking to the sinner. He's not talking to the whoremonger on the street. You trying to say that the world is the reason why we're in the 
Hallelujah. But it's me. Hold on. Y'all ain't talking now. Standing in the need of prayer. Throw your head back in this sanctified church and shout, Lord, to a work in me. Yeah. To a work like only you can. Go deep, deep down and cut me out. Yeah. Your heart. 
sense. You better sense the urgency. You better sense the urgency. It's as if heaven is saying there's a 911 emergency. And when there's an emergency, you can't handle it like it's something normal. There's an emergency. I had to get here. There's an emergency because Jesus is coming back. But he says before I do, I'm going to pour out of my spirit on sons and daughters. I didn't say perfect, but I said submitted sons and daughters. There's a transfer of the anointing. Sons, daughters, position yourself. Joel prophesies I'm on over lift your hands up 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 he did it the ocean up up lift your hands up 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 who did it the ocean up 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 he did it the ocean up 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 just the keys, please. There's a pour. There's a pour on sons and daughters softly. I hear a humming. There's a pour, sons and daughters. He says, in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit on all flesh, sons, and daughters shall prophesy. May God anoint the eyes of the prophet with purity. You shall prophesy. You shall preach. In the Old Testament, it was only for the men child. But he says, in the last days, there will not be discrimination. I'm going to give it to Boshinaha. To sons and daughters. The old men are dreaming dreams now. But the Bible says that you will see visions. That's why you got to purify your mind. God wants you to see visions. He wants you to envision it on another level. Sons and daughters, there is a clarion call tonight in this consecration. That's why the pastor put it on the schedule. It's not because it's just what we do at the beginning of the year. But you had to get this word. The Lord said to tell you, you are too anointed as sons and daughters. You're, you're too creative to allow the enemy to run rabbit through your life. There is a pour that's getting ready to happen and it's happening now. Upon those who will position themselves this year. I'm going to be like Psalm 91. He that dwelleth not stop by see there's a difference by there's a difference in stopping by the house and dwelling in the house come on you stop by to see me in my house you don't get to park in my parking lot you don't get to open my refrigerator without permission because you don't dwell there but he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide there's a positioning that God is giving sons and daughters and to every generation that would say Lord pour into me according to my faith lift up your hands I don't preach past I want you to stretch your hands wide if you can if you need some room 
Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands wide. Sons and daughters. This millennial generation. Young men and women. God is getting ready to pour fresh wine into you. New wine skin. There's been a generation that's been so religious but don't have any relationship. But the Lord said, this generation, you, you won't go through the normal protocols and you may not know all of the church lingo and all of the things and the doctrine and all of those things. But all you know is I'm hungry. I want to be used by him. Greek, don't know Hebrew, haven't been to ministry school, don't have credentials. I came from the backside of the desert like David. I, I, I'm dirty in some places. I'm not perfect, but I want to be like him. But Lord, if you pour into me tonight, come on, sons and daughters. Come on, I'm talking to a generation. I'm talking to a generation. Come on. I'm talking to a millennial generation. I'm talking not just to the young people, but I'm talking to all of us. He says, I set you up at the beginning of this year. To allow the debris of last year, the debris of things that hurt you and left you for dead. He says, I sent you here tonight because I'm pouring fresh oil into you. The oil didn't start pouring until David got in position. Samuel was trying to pour somebody. He was trying to pour the oil onto somebody else. But it didn't start pouring until David got in position. Come on, David. Open up your mouth. Desperation has a sound. Hunger has a sound. Being in the right position has a sound. If this is boring you, whatever that finger means, if you want to sneak, uh, sneak out right now, I, I, I don't encourage it. But I want to talk to the remnant tonight. Come on, open up to the baboche. Come on, open up to him. Open all the way up. Open all the way up. If you got to cry, if you got to lay out, if you got to bend on your knees, come on, get into a posture. Get into a position of receiving. Get into a position of receiving. Come on. Come on, sons and daughters. The master has need of you. The master has need of you. The master has need. The master has need of you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, that's it. saturate you don't you sit there and look and wait on something more than what God has said sons and daughters I want to heal you I want to heal you I want to heal your emotions I want to heal your identity come on come on come on lean in lean in lean in there's a sweet presence of the Lord lean in lean in it's your turn yeah, it's your turn. Yes, it's your turn. 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 Come on.
Come on, come on, come on. I come against every lie of the enemy that's been pronounced on this generation. I come against every plot, plan, trick, trap of the enemy. I uproot every scheme in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every word that's been spoken to negatively affect what you think about yourself. Come on, I need you to press now. And I speak the oil of God to be released. I'm not led to lay hands on you. But if you open up your mouth and lean back a little bit, you'll feel the wind of God. You'll feel the touch of God. You'll feel the touch of God. And there it is. Come on. Come on. There it is. 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 Come on, 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 there it is. Touch me. I'm the answer my generation needs. Come on. Come on. I don't care nothing about generational dysfunction. The sins of your forefathers will not you he shut up set I feel the strong wind of God I don't care what your mama did stay right where you are it will not be laid on you set up I don't care if papa was a rolling stone it will not be laid upon you I speak a rich heritage I speak the inheritance of God come on come on lean in come on give him all your cups he's gonna give you all he has come on give him all your cups I speak I speak spiritual transfers it's a as we repent as we get rid of things God you do a spiritual transfer it's a rich mysteries of your will and your way come on let's go hey a hunger for thirst a hunger and thirst after righteousness be imputed unto me come on intercessors now come on generation hey this ain't gonna come from head knowledge you gotta pray this through let there be a wailing in the bellies of the sons and the daughters let there be a cry in the bellies of the sons and daughters let intercessors come up through this generation come on he's pulling you I know it's uncomfortable because God is pulling you come on let him position you continue those things which are behind me I can't do nothing about the past but learn from it hey I'm looking ahead come on it's on you now come on that anointing that you've been praying about it's coming upon you that anointing that you've seen on others he's giving you your own anointing come on open your mouth don't get louder than the voices come on open your mouth come on open your mouth your yes come on sons and daughters come on sons and daughters come on come on come on the kingdom has need of you the kingdom has need of your gifts lift up your hands as high and wide as you can one more time With all the strength that you have, I'm going to count to three. With all the strength that you have, Lord, what is my response? My response is yes. With all the strength that you have, at 
the count of three, I want you to open up your mouth. You better watch this, yes. You better watch this one now. This one is going to release dreams and visions. Some of you are dreamers, but you have no interpretation. God is going to release dreams, visions, and interpretations. This yes is going to unlock the plan of God on your life and everything that has hindered you up until this point. God said today this yes is ushering you into a new place. Come on, I need you to find some strength. I know you've been in service all week, but I need you to find some strength and give him a strong yes. One, I want you to lift that music up too. There's a rumbling in here. Shondo Babaha. There's a rumbling in here. There's a rumbling in here. This yes is getting ready to put you in position. Three shout yes.
hands out like you're holding something. Miracles. Signs and wonders are being released in this generation. You shall lay hands on the sick. Sons and daughters. And they shall recover. You shall cast the devil out in Jesus name. Come on, you got to get this impartation. Hey, miracles. Signs and wonders. We've lost it in this generation. We don't see it like we should. But I release it upon you. Those who are hungry, say, Lord, use my hands. Eat up. <laughs> to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Use my hands to cast the devil out. Come on. In Jesus' name. Use me, Lord. That's it, my sister. Use me. Use me beyond what I've ever seen. Use me beyond what I've ever imagined. <laughs> That's it. That's a cry of healing right there. That's a cry of deliverance right there. That's a different cry right there. That, that's, that, that's, that's a cry from the soul. Come on, come on. Let him heal you, my sister. That's a cry of deliverance. I wish somebody around her would help her go through that breakthrough, that deliverance. I wish somebody around her. I wish somebody around her would pick her up. That's a cry of deliverance. That's a cry where chains are being broken. Come on, I wish I had somebody still in here. Be healed, be delivered, be set free. That's it. Lay your hands on her. Be healed, be delivered, be set up. Be healed, be delivered, be set free. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just lift your hands up to him one more time. Breathe. Not yoga, not new age mysticism. Some of you have been holding your breath waiting for the next attack. The Lord says, I give you my numa. Whoo. Ruach of God, the breath of God, as he breathed into the valley of dry bones upon those that had been slain, and they stood back on their feet, an exceeding great army. I want you tonight to seal this with worship if you receive that you're one of the part of this last generation where revival is going to break out through you. Come on, seal it with worship. Come on, seal it with worship. Come on, sons and daughters. You have a radical worship. You have a radical worship. Oh, oh. Come on, you have a radical worship. That's why the devil has been trying to pollute it. Because you have a radical worship. Come on. It's shaking the earth. 
somebody that's close by you and I want you to tell them now that you have positioned yourself for the poor get ready for a new thing come on find somebody else find two or three more witnesses every word be established two or three more witnesses come on tell them now that you position yourself for the poor 
Come on, tell somebody else now that you position yourself for God's poor. Get ready for the new thing. Hey, hey. Oh, shut up behind. This week, there are going to be some new testimonies, Pastor. Even the Lord said to me, he says, Barbara, I'm going to give you some new testimonies. I love testifying about how God healed me years ago. But he says, I'm going to give you some new testimonies. That means I'm going to take you through a test and give you something to testify about. Holler one more time to the Lord. Thank you for new things. Clap your hands strong and give him praise. Come on, if you receive this, another most shine. Come on, sons and daughters. Come on, you have another sound. Come on, sons and daughters. I want to tell you this this year. Please hear me. As gracious as your pastor and first lady are, do not become familiar with them. Do not ever become familiar with your leaders. As friendly as they are, as lowly and humble as they are, do not become familiar with your leaders. Put a handle on their name. Because you've got to understand when you honor the man and woman of God, God honors you. Don't have your mouth on them. Don't speak negatively against them. Because your honor is attached to what God will do in your life. Serve your way to where God is taking you. Come on, clap your hands one more time and give the Lord praise. Bring me my phone, Nakia. The Lord said tonight to challenge 12 people. I'm the first, and I don't want to do this long because there's such a strong anointing in here. There are 11 people tonight that will join me with a seat of 222. And I want you to stand quickly. I want you to stand quickly. I want you to stand quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Even if it's a sacrifice, that's what he loves. I want you to stand quickly. Hey, thank you, Jesus. There's such a sweet presence of the Lord in here. I see you, my sisters. I see you, pastor. I see you. Stand quickly. Even if you're getting your offering together, stand and get it together. I see you over there. Stand with that seed of 222. Don't stop talking now. Come on, sons and daughters. Don't stop talking now. There are others of you. The Lord said 12, 12. The Lord said 12. And I know you're here, and I don't have any more virtue hardly to give out to you tonight. I want you to stand as quick and as fast as you expect God to move for you when you sow seed. Thank you. I see you, woman of God. Come on, there's others. This is not the devil. Don't rebuke him. Don't start doing a budget in your mind right now. Come on, don't. That's, that's, that's the trick of the enemy to want you to start now thinking about your bills. I am a witness that serving God pays off. Come on, I don't, I, I can't pull you now. You gotta, you gotta know this. Serving God, I see you, young woman of God. Come on, others, sons and daughters, I want you to sow a seed. Some of you have never sown on this level. Some of you have. You've gone above and beyond. But I want you to get used to sowing on certain levels. God will bless you for it. Others of you, listen, let me tell you something. Do not feel, don't allow shame to come right now. Don't allow shame to come right now. This is not shame. If you don't have it, you don't have it. But I'm talking to the ones that do have it, and you can trust God with it. How many people do I have? Are y'all standing together, Pastor? Amen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight people. There's four more people. I'm going to wait on you, but I want you to move quickly. The Lord is talking to you. I want to give you an opportunity to receive this blessing and this service. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout glory to God. Come on, somebody shout glory to God. 
Come on, if you release that praise, God will release those four people. Come, somebody shout glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where are you tonight? Where are you? This is not a stick up. This is a come up. I have the same conviction about this offering as I did about the word. Because I'm telling you, the song is true. You can't beat God giving. No matter how you try. Thank you, woman of God. There are three other people tonight. I see you. Glory to God. I see you. There are two other people tonight that you will sow this seed in faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking tonight. I want to challenge. I want to challenge a single parent. I want to challenge a single parent tonight to sow this seed. And I'm telling you, when you sow this seed, it's going to release the blessings of the Lord that I've experienced as a single parent. I want to challenge a single parent. Where are you? 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 I'm challenging you tonight that you release this seed under the anointing of God and watch him give it back to you. I will not spend time. I'm not going to get into, I see you, woman of God. Come on. Well, let me just stay right here because there's one more person in here that the Lord is speaking to. I see you. I see you. I see you. Now we're in overflow. Somebody come on, shout glory to God. I see you standing, my brother. I see you. I see you. You're already standing. I see you. I want every other person to get a seat of 122 or the closest thing to it. 122 or the closest thing to it. Your seed may be $52. I want you to get it and stand fast. Get it and put that two on the on the back of it. 72, 42. If you have 22, $12. Come on, everybody should be standing with something now. Glory. I know you've been, you are troopers. Can I just say that? You are resilient. You are strong. You've gone through all week long. And I know you're still pressing. Get that seed with two in it. Lift it up to your hand. And lift it up and put it in your right hand. Glory to God. The giving information is right here. You know what the cash app is. Dollar sign Wilson. M-M-C-C. You can give via cash. Somebody has a debit card over there. You can write a good check. Somebody shout a good check. Yeah, a good check. And you can make it payable to MCC Wilson. Put that seed in your hand. Father, thank you. Here we are trusting you again. And we thank you that you said that as we give to you, you would give it back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So we take you at your word. And we thank you that this will be a month and even a year of supernatural financial increase. Thank you for cash apps going off in the wee wee hours of the morning. Thank you, Father, for debt cancellation. Thank you for student loans being erratically erased. Not just, not just paused, not just delayed, but erased. Medical bills in the name of the Lord Jesus increase in our house in the form of our need. Look at your seed and prophesy real strong and say, seed, hey, I'm talking to you. Go into the ground and produce my harvest in the form of my need in Jesus name amen and amen if you're giving cash I want you to observe your CDC protocols and you can come and just lay it on the altar if you're giving cash or check if you're giving via credit card the woman of God has you right here come on pretty baby I'm telling you she was dancing and shouting come give your seat come give your seat come give your seat come give your seat glory to God if you're giving your seat those of you who are online tonight I want to challenge you to don't you dare eat from this word and not sow a seed you see the giving information on the bottom of the screen sow a seed tonight put something into what God is doing those of you that have given via electronic just wave your seed and say hey I'm, I've sown my seed I've sown my seed did you receive the word of the Lord tonight have you positioned yourself for the poor come on I want to hear the sons and daughters especially I don't want to come back when I come back and see you in the same situation come on talk back to me I want you to be positioned all year long be quick to let go of negativity be quick not to dwell on things that don't matter you want to stay in position clap your hands and give God praise for the greatest pastor in Wilson North Carolina come on give God praise for the said man of this house Bishop Designee Sherman